Hello everyone, my name is Ozzy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to turn your tier 2 workbench into an auto crafting machine, to turn all your resources into whatever you need, even while you're away from base. For this system we'll be using a tier 2 workbench, two industrial crafters, power supply of choice, electrical branch, some storage and storage adapters, three industrial conveyors, industrial splitter, industrial combiner, and a switch. First we'll place our tier 2 workbench, and then the crafters on the middle and top section. I recommend connecting to your main power supply, but for this video I'm just going to use a small battery. Now fun fact, if you put electronics on this backboard on your workbench, it's actually connected to the wall, not the bench. I've tried doing some trap stuff with this, so if the wall blows, my electrical is still there and it, it doesn't work. But for this video we're putting everything on the wall anyway, so it's fine. For storage, you can use large boxes or whatever you want. I like using the small ones and the space underneath the bench. If you rotate the first box once, go to the left, and then rotate the second box three times, and go to the right, you'll have enough room for your adapters on the sides, and it's a lot more compact. For the industrial components, we need a conveyor on each crafter, a splitter, on the left side, and then we're going to connect our input box to each of the conveyors through the splitter, conveyors to the crafters, and then for our output we need a combiner and a conveyor. So connect the crafters to the combiner, and then through the conveyor to your output box. Now you can connect this to an auto sort system on the front or the back side, but we're going to discuss that a little bit later because it'll make more sense once I've shown you how the system works. For the electrical, you can put a switch if you'd like to be able to turn the system on and off. Connect to your power and then into the branch. Branch out to the conveyor, pass through to another one, pass through to the power in on the industrial crafter. And then over here to the right side as well. And then I'm also going to dump in resources. Resources are going to be dependent upon what it is you're trying to craft. These resources are just what we're going to use for this video. So that is everything for our setup. Now that the simple part's out of the way, let's take a look at blueprints. Selecting which blueprints are placed into each crafter is part of what makes the system work. I've put nearly every tier 2 recipe compatible with this system in this box, separated into two categories. The top half is pipe based and incendiary ammo, the bottom half is based on the syringe which already has the recipes necessary for the Molotov, and then by just adding gunpowder or stones, you could craft anything else down here as well. Now the system only works with items that can stack, so it's ideal for ammunition and expendable items, but not for gear or weapons. In the same vein, the medkit won't work with the system because it only stacks to one. Here's a graph of the full recipes for most of the compatible items with the system. You can also craft tier 1 items with the system, provided there are only four unique input resources for your chosen items in each crafter. For example, let's say we want to make high velocity rockets and syringes. Because they have five different resources between them, they would have to go into separate crafters. So if our first crafter has the rocket in it, we would need to choose other items that fit with these two resources as well as two empty spaces that we have currently. So we could do the homing missile and the incendiary rocket, although I don't really use these three together, so I'll go with the incendiary shotgun shells instead. Now these would be our four unique input resources. So we have two more blueprint spots that we could use as long as they meet these criteria. For example, if we want to use SAM ammo, we could because it uses pipes and gunpowder. We could also pull from something down here like the frag grenades because it uses gunpowder and frags. We'll then load those into our crafter. And it's not necessary to put the inputs here, our conveyors will do that for us later. This is just for visual reference for the video. And then our second crafter will be the syringe. We can also throw molotovs in there since it uses the same resources, and rifle ammo is always useful. For that we'll need the gunpowder though. So this would become our four resources, meaning we wouldn't be able to craft the concrete barricade with this setup. We could, however, though, throw in the flashbang grenade or any of these others over here. We'll throw these into our crafter, and then we also need to preload our outputs with one of each item we intend to craft. The way this system works is it uses the conveyor on the right to only pull as many of an item as we want into our output box. Once we reach that number, the crafter will finish a full stack 
and then it will move on to the next item. Without the items preloaded, the crafter will instead fill the output completely, and then we won't have room for any of the other items we want to craft. We also need to determine craft order. The crafter prioritizes the leftmost blueprint, so it'll craft the grenades first, and the SAM ammo, etc. If we want to put the rockets first, the grenades second, and the ammo last, we would arrange it like this. Your output order doesn't matter, only the blueprints. Another thing to keep in mind is maximum stack size. SAM ammo stacks to a thousand, so if we were to place it first, it would likely use all of our resources just crafting the filler stack before moving on to our other items. Honestly, I don't recommend crafting SAM ammo with the system for that reason. Here's a chart of the most compatible tier 2 items and their stack sizes, as well as for the tier 1 items. Finally, we'll preload our second crafter, arrange as desired, and then if you're not using all four slots, Simply put any useless item in the empty slots, and then we can fill out that output so we're not crafting any additional items than necessary. The last thing for this system is to set up our conveyor filters. For our input conveyors, we want to set them for the maximum of each resource necessary to craft one item in our crafters. This helps reduce resource loss and overuse. For example, for our bottom crafter, we'll need gunpowder, cloth, frags, and low grade. So we're going to put each of those into our bottom left filter. Then we'll look to see which of our items uses the most of any resource to craft. Looking at each of these, it looks like the flashbang uses the most gunpowder at 25, the syringe uses the most cloth at 15, the flashbang again with metal frags at 50, and then the molotov uses the most low grade also at 50. So then we'll come over to our filter and put those in here as our maximums. That way we're only putting as many resources as we need for any one craft into our crafter at a time. We're also going to set the minimums on these to 1 in order to make sure that our input box will always have room for additional resources needed to craft these items. The filter mode will stay on any item, and then we click apply. We'll do the same thing for the top crafter. We'll need pipes, gunpowder, sulfur, and frags. And then looking at the items, let's see. The rocket has the most pipes and gunpowder at 1 and 100, the incendiary uses 20 sulfur, and then the grenade uses 25 frags. So we'll set those maximums. And then once again we're going to put 1 as our minimum for each of these. Filter stays on any item, and then click apply. And then lastly for our output filter, we're going to need one of every item we intend to craft. So we're going to need high-velocity rockets, grenades, incendiary shells, SAM ammo, syringe, rifle ammo, if I can spell, molotovs, and flashbang grenades. Now this is the way in which we'll tell the system how many of each item we want to craft. So for example, say I want four stacks of rockets, two stacks of grenades, one stack of these, a stack of those, six stacks, three, one, and one. Then I would set it up like this. So another thing to keep in mind though is your crafter is also going to have one full stack of every item once it's completed crafting everything. So I may not even want to put any SAM ammo in here, I may want it to be zero, and only use the stack in the crafter because using a thousand ammo is probably not going to be very likely in the time that I'm going to use everything else in this system. And then we're also going to set the minimum filter on everything to one so we can maintain that placeholder that we have in the output of each of the crafters. Filters mode stays on any item, and then click apply. Now all that's left is to turn on power to our system, turn on each of the conveyors and the crafters, and then our conveyors will begin pulling resources from our resource box into the crafter, maintaining those maximums that we set and allowing space for 
the necessary resources to come in. It'll craft the items that we have set for it, and then our conveyor on the right side will pull those items out and pass them into our box. Once our box's maximums have been set, the crafter will fill up one more output stack before moving on to the next items in the sequence. Now this system is designed to be self-contained in order to avoid blueprint switching. You can connect it to an auto-sort system on the input side by placing an additional conveyor, preferably with maximums for resource efficiency. And on the output side you'll need a buffer with filter pass check so you aren't pulling any items from the system until it is completed. Otherwise you'll only ever craft the first blueprint in each crafter, or you'll end up with random items in different boxes that you weren't anticipating. Those are outside the scope of this video, but if there is enough interest, I'll make another one with how to do that. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see any more videos like this in the future. Leave any questions or comments for me down below, and I will see you all next time.